Well, uh, first, uh, well, if you talk about the history of, of the nuclear power in Europe, then we should keep in mind that, that Europe has been divided uh, during Cold War. So there are two uh, different histories. One is the, the Russian, uh, the East Bloc. One is what, what happened uh, in West Europe. And I'm more familiar, actually, with West Europe. In East Europe, they had just uh, one, it was more or less one development that uh, Soviet Union was uh, uh, fostering nuclear industry very much. So there were quite some built in. In Soviet Union, uh, which are still running in Ukraine and uh, in the Baltic states, there are some running in Russia, of course. Uh, Poland, di Poland didn't have uh, nuclear power plants, but the Czech Republic, the Czechoslovakian Republic, which it was then, uh, and uh, the in the Czech Republic, there's still old uh, Soviet reactors running. And East Germany, which is this part, there were also uh, some uh, nuclear power plants from the, the RBMK type of, of uh, the Soviet Union, uh, but they were all shut down in 1990, and some of them were uh, constructed but never uh, run. Uh, and well, in the in, in West Europe, there was nearly more or less overall. Uh, the same euphoria uh, of in nuclear in the 50s and 60s as it has been in, in the West and, and in the United States. Uh, so especially in Germany and France and Britain there were uh, many plants, many plants built and much more plans for, for more plants to build. Uh, um, that was actually very much connected with nuclear armament. Mm -hmm. You know that, that Britain and France are uh, nuclear powers and the German, the West German elites also wanted to have a bomb. So that was not, not at all popular with the population. Mm -hmm. and we right had from the beginning. Right from the, not at all, not at all. In the 50s, uh, the, the sentiment uh, in, in the West German population was very anti-military since people not even wanted to have a new army mm. after that. Mm. So, uh, so they had to circumvent that somehow. Mm. That's how they came up with the, uh, use, the civil use of nuclear power, the so-called civil use of nuclear power. Mm. And uh, it just all started first that, that they had to convince the electric companies to build nuclear power plants. They were not at all interested because it's very expensive and, and very risky and, and so there was a lot of public money going in, into this industry. The first uh, nuclear power plants were totally paid by taxpayers' money, not by the companies. And uh, in the beginning, uh, actually, the companies didn't want really, were not really interested in nuclear power. But then later on they realized that it can be a very good business mm. because, uh, exec, uh, especially if you got so, if you get so much subsidies. Mm. So, so, um, so what happened? Uh, we had in, in quite some uh, Euro West European countries anti-nuclear movements, which were some were successful, some not so successful, some not at all, uh, like. In France, it was the worst case. In, in France, uh, an anti-nuclear movement was very weak, and uh, I think they did not succeed in anything. To, uh, so they couldn't stop a any plans. Uh, so that's why France now has uh, such a high uh, percentage of its electricity coming from nuclear power plants. I think it's something like 70 or 80 percent. So in, in Italy, uh, nuclear, the anti-nuclear movement was, was uh, quite successful. Actually, they uh, finally, after the 1986 Chernobyl accident, they had a referendum and they, they shut down uh, the... They had only very few nuclear power plants and they were shut down in 1986. And actually, 
with all this talk about uh, nuclear renaissance, which mm -hmm. is mainly propaganda, mm -hmm. uh, the, the right-wing Berlusconi government wanted to restart nuclear program. Uh, in, in and then the the, the people there, the, uh, well, the environment and movement, uh, all, uh, started a campaign for a referendum, mm -hmm. and then the referendum was set in, I think, sometime like May or mm -hmm. June 2011, mm -hmm. and then then Fukushima happened. Mm -hmm. So and then Berlusconi was say, "Oh well, I really I don't want nuclear power plants now." Mm. So they ended up like that. That more than ninety percent uh, of the Italians in the referendum said no nuclear power in mm. Italy anymore. Mm. Austria, uh, Austria has one nuclear power plant constructed, mm. but it never went in, into operation because mm. they had a referendum on that. That was sometime in the eighties, early eighties, I think. Before uh, Chernobyl? Before Chernobyl, yeah. yeah. And uh, by a very small margin, they, uh, they succeeded in, 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 in the referendum. So they, something like 51% or, uh, of the population said no to nuclear, even before Chernobyl. Pretty much the same in Denmark, even even earlier, that was in the late 70s, uh, that before any nuclear power plant was built, uh, there was a program and there was there were pla plans mm -hmm. to, to build nuclear. Uh, there was a referendum and uh, people said no to nuclear in, in Denmark. Uh, Sweden, Sweden is different and Sweden has uh, quite some uh, nuclear power plants and, and some of them are very close to Denmark actually so the, so the Danish uh, movement was also very motivated by the protests against mm. the, the Swedish uh, uh, nuclear power plants. Um, but nevertheless Sweden has uh, had a referendum after Chernobyl saying that we would phase our nuclear power plants the problem in Sweden is that uh, there's, there's no uh, political party really pressing for to speed up this phasing out. So, so it's in fact it's more or less like business as, as usual. Mm. But at least uh, there is uh, hardly a chance to build new nuclear power plants. Mm. Although some conservative politicians are discussing it, and what I think they, they, they won't. And uh, to come back shortly to, to Denmark, uh, actually the, the Danish, uh, the Danish anti-nuclear movement can can be seen as the seed of the uh, wind power industry. So, because from uh, out of this movement, many people started in their co communities to to experiment with wind energy, mm -hmm. build small wind farms, mm -hmm. uh, set up corporations, uh, no cooperatives, uh, which were building wind farms or uh, or running the wind farms and, and, and selling the electricity and stuff like that. So they had a very um, decentralized structure in, in, in electricity, uh, was that uh, in the electricity net and in and, grid and, 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 and uh, setting up the first renewables. So uh, that's uh, so you could say that that somehow uh, Denmark uh, was the cradle of, of wind energy, and they had already 20 percent, more or less, 20 percent of the electricity consumption produced by wind energy in in the year 2000. But then they uh, they they elected a very uh, neoliberal conservative mm -hmm. government, uh, which was uh, really turning the wheel around and uh, stopping the further development of, of uh, renewables, and mm -hmm. also has a, had a very racist uh, policy. It was by every <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> by nearly in every uh, aspect was very bad of this government. Mm -hmm. So. But now it's restarting again in, in, in Denmark. Uh, after last year, they have finally uh, voted out the, the neoliberals and have now a social democratic government. So, 
situation is getting better there again. So coming coming to Germany, West Germany. Um, the, this is West Germany, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, in in the 17s we we had uh, as much plans for nuclear power plants like we had in France. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we had uh, if we would not have a, a very strong anti-nuclear movement in, in West Germany. Uh, Germany would now also have uh, <laughs> like uh, 30 or 40 nuclear wow. power plants. Mm -hmm. But in fact now there are only nine mm -hmm. still running. Um, so they, they had also a, a, a program, a, a full-grown nuclear uh, program, like having a lot of nuclear power plants having uh, reprocessing of spent mm -hmm. nuclear fuel, uh, building a, 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 a long-term storage place for nuclear waste mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and having a fast breeder, which was very important, which Japan uh, has, which the French also tried, but it never really worked. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Japanese, Fast breed is also not really working. Mm. We've been talking about that for many years. Yeah. <laughs> so, the so there was a fast breeder built yeah. in Germany actually, but it never uh, went into operation, mm -hmm. and that it is partly to, uh, partly due to uh, the strong resistance mm -hmm. uh, in the population. Also, uh, there was uh, mm -hmm. for quite some years they tried to build a nuclear uh, reprocessing plant. First, it was plant here in, in Gorleben, which you might know from the protests against mm -hmm. nuclear waste. Mm -hmm. And then they realized that there's so much resistance in that mm -hmm. region that they can't uh, build the reprocessing plant there. Then they moved the plants down there to Bavaria, which uh, used to be a very conservative country. Mm -hmm. and, and the government said, well, well we, we don't mind the resistance from the population. We can build and they couldn't neither. They were for for quite some years. There were regularly very uh, big demonstrations uh, again and again. People and, and at times very militant uh, demonstrations. And so finally, in, I think eighty-seven or mm -hmm. something like that, eighty-eight, they decided, "Oh, we can't build this reprocessing." Mm -hmm. Drop the idea. They dropped the idea. I mean, Britain anti-nuclear movement was partly successful. Actually, they had not the uh, uh, nuclear power plants for quite some time, and they don't have a, a, an industry which is able to build nuclear power plants. The only there were two companies or three, originally three companies in Europe which built nuclear power plants. There were two were German, which later merged and then there was uh, and they're still operating Areva in, in France and um, well the, the 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 German company Siemens was the other the German company uh, which was building nuclear problem they just uh, moved out some mm -hmm. one or two years ago they decided we are we're just out of business we're not uh, going to build any nuclear power plant anymore. So in, in Europe, it's only the French Areva left, and so so somehow France is really outstanding in in Europe. France is the big nuclear country in Europe, and the other countries have only uh, few nuclear power plants. Spain does still have some. Uh, in Finland, they're building a new one. Uh, the French, uh, but uh, well, it, it should have been uh, finished the construction I think two or three years ago. Mm. But they're still, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still uh, uh, working. They're still constructing it, so it takes quite some time. So, but your question, uh, um, but the problem, 
I would take it the other way around. Why, why is France uh, such a... Uh, why they were so successful in France with building the power plants? And I think uh, the problem there is that, that there was a big cons consensus in society. And that was also, in the first place, connected uh, to nuclear weapons, actually. Mm -hmm. Because in, in France, uh, nuclear armament w uh, was seen as uh, a mean of uh, defending French identity and sovereignty, not only against the East Bloc, but also uh, inside the West Bloc, mm. as being a, an independent uh, imperialist power, from it meaning independent from U.S. dominance. Mm. So that, that's why even uh, nuclear armament was uh, more or less popular among many trade unions and the left-wing parties, including the Communist Party, which was, mm. until 10 years ago, was quite mm -hmm. strong in, in France, the, the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being anti-nuclear uh, in, in France was, uh, for a long time, only uh, 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 something a, a case of, of the radical left, mm. so, and, and <coughs> it was very hard for them to uh, to gain majority support. Mm -hmm. Different from from Germany. I mean, in, in the 70s, uh, the 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 movement still was it was a minority movement. Mm -hmm. If you look at polls, but it was very outspoken and strong. Mm -hmm. And finally, in in the 80s. Uh, became a majority issue. So since the 80s, the, the, uh, something like 70 or 80 percent of Germans say no to nuclear in, in any form. Uh, before Fukushima, after Fukushima. After Fukushima it was, of course, even, even stronger. So it's um, different from our general perception that uh, the West has been uh, all the time very eager and has been very successful in building nuclear power plants. Um, it's just that uh, one single country, Germany, <laughs> uh, which is um, uh, uh, planning to phase it out uh, as a matter of uh, to the contrary. Yeah. The general trend is to phase out nuclear. Just that uh, France, um, due to its very special reason, yeah. is sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what they are saying in Germany as well. But we are the only country which is uh, phasing out nuclear. That's not <laughs> true at all. I mean, there are some countries, it's all Italy, uh, Denmark, and Poland. Uh, well, Poland want to build some, but they still don't have. Uh, so, uh, Portugal and uh, the most smaller countries neither don't, ju they just don't have nuclear power mm. plant. And there are decisions. I mean, I told you about the referendum in, in, in Italy. Belgium also, they do have some yeah. nuclear power plants, but they also have a decision of phasing out. Mm -hmm. Switzerland, they quite have uh, a lot of, well, compared to their size, a lot mm -hmm. of nuclear power, but also they have, after Fukushima, a decision that they full out, phase mm -hmm. out, but very slowly, mm -hmm. very, very slowly. But at, at least there is now this mm -hmm. decision, and it, it would be very hard to, to build new nuclear power plants. And if you look at the whole of Europe, I mean, there had not been built uh, much power plants at all for, for decades now, for, for decades. I mean, the, it's like 15 or 16 years that the French are uh, talking about their EPR, the mm -hmm. European Pressurized mm -hmm. Reactor, as the, the new and very mm -hmm. modern, absolutely mm -hmm. safe, what they say. Uh, but they are not building. It's mm -hmm. just one build in, in or under construction in, in France and one's under construction in, in Finland. That's it. And That's selling it. some to China. Yeah, and selling some to China. Uh -huh. and, but as far as I know, they're not, not yet running anyone. Uh, it's under construction. Under construction. Well, la let's see how long it takes. I mean, in, in Finland, they are constructing now, I think, for, for six years. Mm. Six years. For <laughs> to set up 1.4 gigawatts. Uh, in electrical power, but we are setting up in Germany each year about two gigawatt in wind energy, mm -hmm. and we set up seven gigawatt in solar energy last year mm -hmm. and the year before. Mm -hmm. You see, in one year, and they they take six years or more just for 1.4 gigawatt. Mm -hmm.
they give you about one nuclear power plant. So there are lots of myths surrounding nuclear saying it's yeah. efficient and economical and so on. <laughs> Thank you.